right. Tira tira da tira bum. Tira da. All right. Welcome to Tanya Today. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad, Zuch, and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. We say good morning. Well, some it's good morning, some it's good afternoon, some it's good evening. <laughs> Clem, it's good, it's good night in Brisbane, Australia. Marlene, it's good morning in Florida. And uh, Terence, also good evening in, or good night in Melbourne, Australia. Cindy's with us in Florida. Eddie in Washington State. Michael in Germany, good afternoon. Tim in Texas, Boca Tov. June is also in Australia. Wonderful. John, North Carolina, Shalom. Manuela in Germany, good afternoon. Rusty in Texas. Um, We have Azara, Azaria, welcome, and Costa Rica, Tony is with us, Tamara, welcome, Jane in the Philippines, good evening, in Ghana we have Lucy, uh, is old me, I, I don't know if I got that right, in Israel, oh, in Israel, I don't know if I, I not clear on that. Miriam in London, England. Diane in London, Ontario. Look at that. Ah, and Tamara's in Germany. Okay, a lot from Germany today. Julia in Pennsylvania. Elise in Georgia. Davida in Liba in New York. In California, David is with us. Rena in Colorado, Boker Tov. Joseph, welcome in New Jersey. Um, from Sudan. Good afternoon. Welcome. Ah, okay. Uh, Daphne, South Carolina. I see that um, Ms. Zolde is responding to my question. Robert in California. Who else is joining us? Are you in Ghana, West Africa? Shirley in Michigan. Susan in Scranton, Pennsylvania is with us. <laughs> Excuse me. Simcha in Florida. Lynn in New Long Island. Natasha in Pakistan. We have uh, Vilma, Marcy, Michael. Beautiful. Okay. Excuse me. <clears throat> we begin today the twenty fifth letter, lengthy letter, very fundamental teachings. That will deal with um, many an issue, especially the concept of divine providence, God's involvement in our lives, and the world at large. The backdrop to this letter is a debate in the Jewish community. I'm going to say debate, well those who were not Hasidim, 
took issue with the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov in a safer in a book called Savas Rivash. We will learn more about. It. Took issue and there was a big, uh, you know, they they um, critic were critical of the teachings. The Al Tareb is defending it in this letter, and he's defending it without mentioning the debate, the issue, um, without even mentioning what the actual issue and problem was, let alone where it came from, from the Misnagdim, from those who were contrary to the Hasidic movement in that in his times. But he just deals with the issue. Okay, let's go. Lahavin Imre Bina to comprehend the words of understanding, meaning the words of Torah. Let's comprehend it. As stated in the book, Tzavos Rivash, which means the testament of the Baal Shem to, which the Rebbe says this is in fact is not his will in the testament that he ordained before his passing. In other words, like the last will and testament. No, it's not. It is gleanings of his pure sayings. Compilations after compilations. And not the, something that the, that the Baal Shem Tev wrote, but compilers took from his teachings and they didn't know how to phrase his teachings exactly. Because the Baal Shem Tev spoke in Yiddish and the book Tzavas Rivash, Rivash is recorded in Hebrew. So they got the content of his teachings correct. That was absolutely correct. But the exact uh, translation and meaning of some words were a little were a little uh, off, and that's where the issue comes in. And Al Tareb will come back to that much later. But to appreciate the teachings, first we need to understand in other teachings of our sages. Sages in the Talmud said that whoever is angry, is in rage, resembles an idolater. Now, Alter says that this is all clear to those who, under, who are understanding, because we're, where do you get angry? Why do you get angry? Because in that moment you lost faith in God that this was what occurred divinely orchestrated, called divine providence. <coughs> <laughs> because if a person would believe that what happened to them is God's doings, then a person wouldn't get angry at all. Now, true that if it came through the hands of an individual, that that person who did harm to you has freedom of choice, right? whether to curse you, whether to strike you, whether to cause damage to your property. Therefore, they would be guilty by the laws of man and by the laws of heaven. Why? Because they chose an evil thing to do. So the perpetrator cannot plead innocence by saying, oh, I'm just merely an instrument of the hands of God in order to bring providence, divine providence, uh, to this person. This is what they were deserving of, obviously. This is what they got, right? So that person can't plead that. They have freedom of choice, whether to do any harm or not to another individual. However, at the same time, regardless of the person's uh, responsibility for their evil perpetrated chosen act, nonetheless, in regards to the person that was harmed, this incident had been decreed in heaven that this person would be harmed. And God has many agents. So it didn't have to be this person that chose to do it. Could have been in another manner, whatever. God has infinite possibilities that he could bring to this person whatever harm that is meant for them. God has many agents. Therefore, um, this is something that would, ha would have happened in some form or another. Again, God has many agents. That's the, that's the concept over here. Further, says the al Rebbe, not only does God have many agents, and therefore this was a decree from heaven that some harm was meant to come to this individual. By the way, why is that harm? So is it something that we've discussed 
you know, uh, previously, um, and that's not the point here. The point over here is why a person would not get angry. If they know that this is coming from God. But furthermore, says this heavenly decree has given permission um, that a person can possibly bring suffering to another. But it's even more than that. At that moment, when the person strikes another or uses their mouth to curse somebody, you know, do whatever negative things with their mouths, at that moment, where do they get the power to do that? We're not an energizing bunny that we have our own self-propelled, you know, um, uh, force. But the power comes from God, from the breath of his mouth, which animates and sustains us. That's where it's coming from. So not only is the permission granted that a person can perpetrate the evil, again, it's their choice and they're responsible for it, right? But the power to do the evil is actually coming from God, animating the person at that very moment. And this is what it means in the story of King David and Shimi. That King David said that Shimi, uh, when he cursed him, he, he, Shimi cursed King David. So King David says, for God told him, curse. Now, we don't see anywhere in the Torah, in Tanakh, that uh, God told Shimi to curse King David. But what does it mean? It means the thought that came to his mind and the desire in his heart to actually um, fulfill the thought of his mind came from God. So God is one who's responsible for it the thought entering into Shimi's mind to curse King David. God animated and gave the power to the mind and the thought to actually desire to curse. Now, again, you're responsible just because you have a negative thought doesn't mean that you should fulfill it. That's the choice that we have. But the spirit of uh, Shimi was animated at the time that he spoke the words to David. Why? Because it's the word of God, the breath of his mouth, that gave the power for Shimi to actually open up his mouth and actually curse. Right? The movement of my hand, again, I, I don't have my, I'm not the source of the movement of my hand that I'm moving right now. I'm not, I'm, I choose to move it, but the power to move it is something that God grants. The pow, I choose to speak the words I'm speaking now, but the power to do so is a power that is coming from God. So for good or for the opposite, right? It's a power that comes from God. That's today's teachings. Um, I've uh, told the story before, worthy of telling it again. A friend of mine was once walking in New York City on a misty day with an umbrella and a punk kid, teenage kid, ambushes him and says, give me your wallet, your money, your life, right? This type of thing. My friend was a bit of a, you know, what we call a chutzpah yak. <laughs> You know what he did? The umbrella that he was holding, he just swatted the gun and the gun went off. Kid went running and my friend walked away. He comes home and his wife realizes that, hey, he's bleeding right here in the chin. Realized that what happened was that the bullet deflected off the umbrella in such a manner that it lodged in the chin and because of the adrenaline of the moment he didn't even realize it he didn't realize what's going on so let's take apart this story for a moment does this kid have a choice to pull the trigger or not pull the trigger absolutely doesn't have a choice and why would you punish him 
Why would we be responsible for the choice? Now, maybe he's in a real bad place and almost lost his choice, but ultimately we say he's responsible for his choices. He made a bad choice. But what happened with the choice to pull the trigger? It's not the choice, but the power to do it, God gives. And not only that, of course, the power, yes, God gives that he could actually pull the trigger. But moreover, is the fact that it deflected off the umbrella, right? What could have happened is that it could have gone, God forbid, through his brain. And he wouldn't be here. Or it could have deflected and missed him entirely. But what indeed it did happen was it did lodge in his chin. Um, so did it was that a choice of the uh, of, of this robber? No. His choice was, am I gonna pull the trigger or not? He chose to. The power to do it was given by God. The consequence of what would happen to that bullet, that it would admit, could have missed him, could have, God forbid, killed him. But what it, in fact, what it did do, it did do, divinely orchestrated. That's what the author is saying. If it wouldn't have come to him through this individual, harm would have come to him in another way. Not necessarily in the, in the, same, in the same manner of, um, of a bullet in his chin. Who says? Maybe yes, maybe not. Maybe that's, you know, that wasn't the important point. The important point was some other kind of message that God wanted to bring to my friend um, so it's a very powerful uh, powerful idea okay any questions any comments any thoughts on this reminder trc today at 4 30. when cain was Cain given permission to kill Abel? Or was that his free will? Of course it was his free will. When we say given permission, over here when we said given permission to do the harm, just because you're given permission doesn't mean you have to do it. Everything that's permissible is something you should do. No. You have to be a person of integrity you have to be upright you have to do right from wrong so just because you have permission doesn't mean it's the right thing so god's giving permission doesn't mean that's what he wants that's what he's testing you with to see if you can overcome that urge that desire to do harm right in kitsushimi was to curse king david in the case of my friend was you know to to rob him And that's a choice that we, we make, and we're responsible for that choice. But the consequence of that choice is not up to the robber. It's not up to Shimi. It's not up to the person who did, you know, spoke to you harshly or did something harmed you monetarily. No, that's divinely orchestrated. And if it wouldn't have come through this person, so it would have come through another person as God has many agents. That's a, a beautiful, a beautiful message to live with. Any other questions? Susan can't hear anything. Sometimes you have to go out and go back in. You can hear now. Okay, beautiful. It's every rain decreed for us already, but not those who will to do. It's everything decreed. Everything is decreed. Yes. Can any of it change? Yes. Yes. Everything that happens to us is decreed from heaven. It's God's will. And that's the point that he's making over here. If we really recognize that this is God's will, 
this is what God is providing at this moment. He's giving the vitality to this person that is actually bringing me harm. Now, it's coming from Klippa, so we're going to learn more about that. But it is something that God is providing, right? Then um, we need to, well, if we recognize that, then we wouldn't get angry because we know it's meant to be. Right? Okay, excellent. So, um, uh, Ilan, please share with us. Thank you. Actually, uh, Michelle and I are friends, and she we were discussing it in a separate room for a second. <laughs> and I'd like to let say her thoughts, and then I'll give my thoughts afterwards. If sure. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Michelle. Welcome. Hi, hello, hello. Likewise. It's very interesting what you're talking about um, regarding anger because I've always thought of it as a very natural emotion that really can't be helped. But what we need to do is control how we display it. Um, and I wanted to ask you this. I mean, being angry, we cannot help within ourselves. But how do we stop ourselves having bad thoughts towards that person we're angry at? Do these thoughts count or do they not count because we're not uh, showing any anger towards them? We're feeling it inside, but we're not putting our anger onto them. So excellent question. that's what I'm struggling with. That's an excellent question. So... On one hand, you could say that, you know, if you're not expressing it to another person, then you're not, you know, you're not bringing harm to that person, which that is wonderful. But on the other hand, you're bringing harm to yourself. The thoughts are the most, um, you know, in the thoughts of the person, that's where we're at. Where we really live is in our heads, in our thoughts. So if we are angry in our thoughts so that's where we're living we're living in a place of negativity we're living in a place that we're actually um displaying to ourselves forget about to anybody else but displaying to ourselves that god it doesn't exist in this space in my head because if god does exist then i wouldn't be angry because I know that what has occurred to me is meant to be. We're talking about now what occurs to you, what happens to you. Let, let me explain. Let me go deeper in this. Um, and it's actually, I think, it might be in tomorrow's class, but worthy of, uh, you know, of bringing it up. Um, when I'm hurt, it's all. It's almost never my response when i show anger um, because of the person's immoral choices you know, i'm angry at their immoral choices usually when i'm what you know 9.9 .9 times out of 10 the reason why i'll be angry is because i was pained whether someone said something nasty to me whether someone harmed me physically or or you know damaged property of mine whatever the case may be my response primarily is about what I am lacking, lose, lost, um, hurting. And that's what I'm responding to. Well, if you recognize that that all was meant to be, I'm not, I'm not explaining why it was meant to be. And that's not the first point, not why, but what? What the fact is, what is happening was meant to be. Well, God wanted it to happen and it could, didn't have to happened through this person could have happened through somebody else there's many agents so therefore what is there to get upset and angry at that it happened to me now it's happened to somebody else and you're upset because of their immoral choices because of that how dare you you know do a damage to somebody else that's wrong you've lost your integrity and da 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 da, da. so that's a different story right 
you're angry at their lack of morality. But when it happens to you, seldom is that what makes us angry, is that person who acted immoral. That person made a wrong choice, and we're upset at that. Um, now, it can happen, but usually it doesn't happen, and that's the instance we're talking about over here. So, ah, uh, you didn't display the anger, but you're living in, the, in that anger, and, and in the thoughts of the person, that's where you're found, that's, you know, where you live. You don't want to live there because you're living in a place of negativity. You're living in a place that's devoid of recognizing God's providence in your life. Does that make sense? Yes, Rabbi. Thank you. Yes, it does very much make sense. All right. Thank you. Ilan, share with us, please. I found it interesting when you said it was a vote I can I can totally understand that concept. Right. For me, it's a lot simpler. I, I don't even need to bring Hashem into the equation for this. And I apologize. I hope that doesn't make you angry. No, not <laughs> at all. Um, so, so, so for me, basically, first of all, I agree with Michelle that, that anger, everyone's going to just has the capacity for some utility in our lives. Right. Uh, the problem is that it will it, it loses utility pretty quickly, um, and that talking about that you know if you dwell in the anger, um, even if you don't show it. Can you hear me? Okay, by the way, I'm getting yes. the red bar. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, great. For me, it's very simple. If people get angry, and what do they do? They judge. They judge this sin. They say this shouldn't be the way. And for me, it doesn't have to be divine providence that I'm, I'm rejecting. I'm just rejecting the, re the reality is that the event occurred. And it occurred for reasons. And if I'm going to be angry about it, I'm just going to shouldn't be. But as you know, there's no shoulds. Right. There, there's just ours. So you can call that, you know, the Shmaya pro divine providence. I just call that reality. Like the reality is that my friend did lie to me. My friend did, you know, cheat me. My did hit me. Now, I could be angry at that person and say, like, why did you do that? And, you know, it shouldn't have been done. Or I can understand where it all came from. What, why is this person behaving this way? And can I have compassion for that person? Right. And, 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 and does this anger serve me? It does not serve me. Uh, it just makes me a, a literal physiology different when I when I exist in that anger. Right. So um, thank you, Elon. That was very good. That was excellent. And um, so while that is a very good way to, uh, uh, to look at it, um, and the Alter Rebbe in previous um, teachings is also mentioned some of the points that you made, that you brought up um, but here see the, the the difficulty is when you look at it only from a human perspective is it serving you well like you said your physiology is changes which we all sense that a hundred percent and uh, that you know we see that it doesn't get us anywhere that's all true, but it's not absolute. It's not absolute. And it's not divine. It's human. And we process then things in that way because of everything is a causing an effect. So we're seeing the cause and what's the effect? And is that effect, you know, uh, serve me or not serve me? and which is very true but there's something greater than that and there's an a, an absolute truth and the absolute truth is that this is coming from god and if it's coming from god then it's meant for me absolutely 
from a human perspective, maybe it wasn't meant for me. Maybe it was just an accident. Maybe it was just a freak of, you know, whatever. Uh, who says it was meant for me? Who says I should absolutely take a message from here? I could choose to or choose not to. Who says that I should internalize this and see that this is, you know, a, um, a moment of growth? I could choose to or not to choose to. It's all based on me. But if it's based on, right, based on, on an absolute truth that God is animating this moment and giving the, the vitality to this person that they did what they did, and it's totally, then it has a divine aspect to it that it, that is absolutely something that I have to take from it that's positive, that's going to bring me to a greater place as a result knowing full well knowing full well that this is god's plan what he wants so it, it you know it and and what that does then is brings you closer to god so what, what you said was was good and I, there's no argument with it but it, it's not as foolproof it's not as true and it's missing anything divine. And when I mean divine, I mean that which is that allows us to rise beyond the human condition. That allows us to to totally be, you know, that the human condition doesn't doesn't um, dictate us, but we dictate the human condition. So I, I would, you know, just add that to what you're saying. Any thoughts? Yeah, on I didn't hear a single thing you just said that disagrees with what I said. Oh no, it doesn't I, it doesn't no, it doesn't disagree. Yeah. I, I, I said I totally you, agree yeah. with everything you just said. Yeah, 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 no, it think, doesn't yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the model for Yiddishkeit is that you 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 have uh you you're at Shema, you have the the divine and you have, you know, the respect for it and you work from there. For me personally, I think it would be better served to work from the ground up. So, it, it, absolutely, when I encounter a moment where I take that as a learning experience for growth, and 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 my ultimate goal is to 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 have to be the best person I can be in this right. world. I'm not even thinking about the next world. Uh, oh no! It's got nothing to do about the next world. It's got to do about the, the here and now, a hundred percent. Oh no! Yeah. Uh, I didn't mention anything about the next world. <laughs> no, no, I know, but but I'm saying I, I, I don't, I don't know how much like why making it divine changes anything. It for me, it, it's exactly the same. I can learn from it. You could you could say it's. Well, first of all, it's bringing you. First of all, it's bringing you closer to God through that. You're bringing God into the equation, so it makes uh, God, um, you know, more real for you. And ultimately, um, that 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 is the point of bringing that God is not a, some divine being that's beyond this world, but is you know that we relate to Him in this world through the things that happen to us in this world. So that that so if yeah. I'm growing every time I encounter I get angry. Like, let's say I I become less angry or the anger dissipates really quickly and I have compassion for the that is angering me or, or that gave me an opportunity to get angry. Am I not um, living with Hashem in that moment? If you attribute it to Hashem. If you attribute it to yourself, then you're living with yourself. Can I say something? Right. That, so, so, so it is. You know, you're right what you're saying, but attributed to Hashem's, then you're living. Then you're not just living with yourself. That's all. Okay. Yeah. I guess. I, you know, I don't want to. You know, take this room into another direction, but I would love to hear what you mean by by that. Like. Okay. You know, you know what? Yeah, M Michelle, give me a moment. Just give me a moment because I gotta catch up over here. Thank you, bo uh, both of you, uh, for 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 this wonderful conversation. Just give me a moment over here because I'm gonna lose a feed, and I want I want to make sure that uh, I can get to everybody. So Susan, Susan is asking. That's okay, Rabbi. 
Yeah, yeah. Aren't there different levels of anger? Yeah, there are different levels of anger, but in the end, it's the same idea. Even, by the way, even the slightest frustration, that's a, you know, there's not a black and white thing, of course. And, you know, the fact that we get frustrated at times, you know, that's a mild form of, uh, of anger, <laughs> right? It's coming from the same place. Uh, by the way, you know, when I'm teaching this, you know, when I'm teaching this to myself, because do I get sometimes frustrated? Yeah. Um, I try not to get angry. Uh, you know, that's not that often or whatever. That real anger, I don't know. But um, frustration sometimes. But that's a mild form. Yes, yeah, so there are different levels, absolutely. But it's the same idea. If there was um, no, if it was a complete awareness an acceptance that this was meant from on high for me, so then there wouldn't be frustration even, right? Rachel, can we, through prayer, change the course of events um, divinely decreed, or can we only sweeten the judgment, or can uh, certain things be changed? Absolutely, things can be changed. No question about it. Now, I'm, I'm not <laughs> someone that knows what there is in heaven that's meant to be and what could be changed so i i can't you know wouldn't be able to answer anything specific but absolutely decrees can be changed they could be sweetened the severities or transformed completely whatever the case may be absolutely susanna so how do we deal with anti-semitism ah excellent so good question uh, how do we deal with anti-Semitism? We, we, we don't get angry. So yeah, some you know, if anti-Semitism, you know, when you're you're angry, I don't, I don't know if angry is the right. If you, again, if you're angered, it's someone's lack of moral choice, not because of how it affects you, but their moral choice. Then that's a different story entirely. We're going to see more about that later when we're going to continue the discussion. But yes. Absolutely, anti-Semitism is something to be. Um, I know angered is the right word, uh, but something that we have a um, that the the uh, yeah anger might be the right word um, as a result of someone's lack of integrity. Uh, Davida, if we choose to do what Hashem wants us to do and it causes hurt to the person, are we then held accountable? That's a very uh, iffy question. I don't know how to answer that because, um, you know, you can't be responsible totally for someone else's feelings. If you do what's right and if you do it in a sensitive um, um, a manner of caring and, and empathy, so then hopefully it shouldn't hurt the other person much you can't be totally responsible for that and then you can't be responsible for that um if you did it again in a caring empathetic manner many questions building on that. okay okay beautiful um, Michelle, you wanted to add something, please yeah, do. Hi, thank you. I wanted to respond to something that Ilan said. I can't sure. remember what you said. I can't remember now, but I remember my response. So I hope he understands me when I say, um, once I was speaking to my Reviton and someone had done me wrong and I was very angry. I was very hurt, Rabbi, and I was very angry inside. And she said to me, pray for that person. Pray for and what? I said, how am I going to pray? She said, pray for them. Pray for the person who hurt you and made you feel this way. And I said, but Robertson, how can I pray for them? When they've, when they've made me feel so bad inside. She said, I promise you this is part of healing. This will make you feel better. And it did. Very good. Excellent. Because what you did was um, something that Ilan mentioned. Um, and sometimes uh, the perpetrator 
And usually perpetrators are people close to us in our lives, by the way, right? The ones who hurt us are the closest, right? Because if you're distant from that person, then, it, you know, you're not going to be hurt by their words so much. Maybe their actions, you know, but uh, not by their words. So we're hurt by mostly by close people. And if, uh, as Elan mentioned, we can appreciate where they're coming from and the challenges that they have and uh, have compassion upon them, empathy and compassion upon them, so that's amazing. Uh, it's something the Altered Ever did speak about in the past. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah we're, we're capable we're capable of that. We're absolutely, absolutely capable. So it's true, um, it is. And as forgiveness is not something um, that that it, its ultimate value is not for the one who gains the forgiveness, but the one who gives it, as uh, your Everton mentioned to you. Absolutely. Thank you, Michelle. Eliana, please share with us. Yeah, just to what Elon and I guess Michelle was saying, you know, like there has purpose to it. And I think if you take a situation and you, and remove Hashem and the divine, you, you lose the purpose. And I that having been in a, a domestic abusive relationship, you know, marriage for, well, we were married 17 years. So what do I, when, when I left, I could have said, oh, you know, like, you know, he just had a hard time and all he could do was take it out on my face and my body and, you know, oh, I hope, you know, I could have, you know, but that's just out of me. And if I don't give purpose to it, then it simply is just an emotion because now it's something I'm not truly dealing with because I'm not allowing a purpose to be, to come of it. So I think when we add the divine, we're able to add the purpose because now I can say, you know, that was 17 years that Hashem said I needed to go through for whatever the purpose of his plan is for my life. And that helps me remember, excuse me, that helps me remove the anger um, that is human. I mean, it is human to be angry at the person that, you know, to be, you know gave me two traumatic brain injuries. Um, so, you know, just to say, hey, I can do this and, you know, it, you know, no offense to a law, but it honestly doesn't sound like anyone has really hurt you in a physical way where you're just like, oh, whatever, you know, like, I don't want to those are real anger and maybe part of my own personal decone was to overcome an anger like that so that I can you know transform it into something into more life very good all right beautiful beautiful conversation with everybody uh wonderful questions and uh, I think I got to all of them if I uh, may I respond rabbi because sure. I think it's going to be valuable sure go ahead so, uh, thank you so much for that um my, my mother actually abused me like most of my life physically and I I'm so I love her so she passed I love her so much um, and the only way I was able to get there is by forgiving her and um, she did the best that she could so um, yeah I mean it, I, I don't think that we need to that personally I don't think that we need the divine to get the value of, of forgiveness and compassion for those that hurt us. Um, I wouldn't change a thing. Like my mother did the best she could and I love her and, and it is what it is. It just, I, I, I do think that, that there is even um, a drawback to bringing in the divine because it, because how do you know, you know, that's, to me, it kind of takes away from the actual situation. Like, how do you know, okay, well, I'm really inspired, so maybe I should let it go, um, let it happen, or, or, or whatever, just accept it. I, 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 you know, this is a larger discussion, and I'm sorry, Rabbi, for bringing it up, but I, it, it felt important to mention that, like, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I haven't lived the best, I haven't had the best uh, uh, time cards dealt to me. Right. Um, and, and I still think, you know, even without bringing Hashem into the equation, I was able to find. And, and, and by the way, I don't think, you know, it depends how we define Hashem, but like I, I still think, he, you know, that concept is present. I just necessarily think there's utility in it necessarily. But that's a larger discussion. Anyway, thank you. 
Thank you. So I, um, well, just to reiterate something that Liana said, that if uh, if it's divinely orchestrated, and just as God created the world for a divine purpose, so that means that particular event that happened to us is divinely orchestrated. Therefore, it's part of um, it's it is part of God's plan, and therefore there's meaning and purpose, and it's coming from God. Therefore, it's all good, and you just you know take the good and it's an imperative to do it the other way as i mentioned is not is what you said is not wrong is very human but there's no imperative in it it's all based on me and what i choose and sometimes i just want to sulk sometimes i just want to be the victim um, when there's a divine involved in it then there is no um, choice if you're accepting the divine that you can sulk. There's no choice to be the victim. There's no choice to be angry. The choice is to um, deal with it. And uh, in all the ways that we mentioned, right, in all the ways that you mentioned, and Michelle mentioned, and Liana mentioned, and others, right, mentioned, in order that we get through uh, in the way that God wants us to get through it. So I think that, you know, is... Um, um, way we are and with that i think i answered all the questions online on facebook lane i see we mentioned about also abusive marriage um and uh, and and as elan mentioned about the abuse that we went through that if we can be um recognizing as we've been speaking about and uh anyways i think that's it if there's more you know what tomorrow is another day <laughs> and we will have continue our conversation god willing i'm rabbi ronnie fine coming to you for chabad zuch and kadesh in Montreal, canada it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the tanya rambam is coming up next and don't forget the trc tanya rabbi community today at 4 30 for those who are part of it many of you are part of the community that's beyond what we do here on a daily basis, but uh, today at 4.30, looking forward for our um, Q&A session. And uh, that's it. Have a great and wonderful day. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, all of you. Amazing. Great stuff. Thank you. This was great stuff today, yeah. Yeah, well, Hashem.